Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pad tutorial where we are creating our Clash Royale like game, right? Last class, we added our troop and whenever we click on the screen now, the troop is spawned and walks to the right, right? That's the only thing the troop do does for now. But what I want to do now is keep working on the troops and on the card. That's the first thing I want to do actually is to fix this card because the card is not actually working because I can just click anywhere on the screen. I don't have to click on the card, right? So what I want to fix is I want to spawn my unit, my troop only when I click on the card, on top of the card. And how can we do that? So let me stop my game here. And to do that, we're gonna do it inside the pointer class. So the pointer, as you know, is our mouse basically, right? It's the hitbox of our mouse. So it's detecting where my mouse is, right? So you also remember that here on the game class in the loop tab, we check if we have pressed the left button. And if so, we just spawn the unit, right? But I don't want to spawn the unit every time that I press the left button. I wanna do it only if my pointer is touching my card. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I want to bring all this code here from the game class to the pointer. I want my pointer to control whether I'm clicking on the card on, or not. So I'm going to select all this code from here. I'm going to hold control in my keyboard and then I press C. So control C to copy this code. I'll go to my pointer class in the loop tab and here after I this is the code for, uh, for me to keep updating the pointer, right? To be always the same position as the mouse. After this code here, I will hold the control and I'll press V. Then I paste all the code that I copied from the game loop. And now we can go back on the game loop and I can delete this code from here because we don't need it there anymore. And as you can see here, if I stop and play my game, my game still works the same. I can click anywhere on the screen and my troops are created. Okay, so now what we have here is if my mouse was pressed with the left button, then I create my Gaspar Ghost that is a unit and my Gaspar Ghost sprite is a new sprite from the ghost image, right? And my Gaspar Ghost X and Y, so my Gaspar Ghost positions, will be the same as my player base inside the game, right? So that means that my player, my Gaspar Ghost will be created in the same position as my player base. Okay, but I only want to do that if when I press the left button, uh, I am also colliding. And when I say I, I say the pointer, the pointer is also colliding with the card. So not just press the left button, but also colliding with the card. And to do that, well, here I check if I have pressed the left button and if I have pressed the left button, then I want to check if my pointer is colliding with the card. So I can say here, if get underscore collision. So if I get a collision, if there is a collision between myself, so the pointer in this case, right? Because we are coding side pointer. So if there is a collision between myself and a object from the class card, then I want to create all these units, right? So there is something important here that is indentation. So you can see here that after the if, everything is indented, right? That means that it, everything has a spacing before the line. And that spacing means that all this code here is gonna happen only if this condition here is true. So if I have pressed the left button of the mouse, right? And then later, if I have pressed the left button of the mouse, I'm checking if there is a collision between myself, the pointer and the card. And I want all this code here to happen only if this condition is true, if I have a collision between the pointer and the card. So I have to bring this code one more uh, spacing inside, one more indentation, right? So I can just press tab on my keyboard and all my lines will be indented properly. 
So if this if here is true, if I'm pressing the left button, then I will check collisions between myself and the card. If I don't have a collision between myself and the card, I don't run this code, I don't create my Gaspar Ghost. If I have a collision between myself, the pointer and the card, I create a Gaspar Ghost and I give a sprite and everything else, right? So let's try it out now. Let me save my game, press play. And you can see that when I press here anywhere on the screen, I don't create my Gaspar Ghost, right? But once I click on the card, then my Gaspar Ghost is created. Very nice. Okay, so now let's go inside the unit class and we are gonna start saying, start telling the unit how it should behave, right? So we have here already the code to make the unit walk to the right, but I don't want the unit to just walk to the right once it's created. I want my unit, my ghost in this case, to choose one of these two bridges to walk to. So my, my ghost will leave from the castle, will choose one of the two bridges, will walk to that bridge, and once it reaches the bridge position, it will then walk towards the enemy castle, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete this code from here and I'm going to go to the start tab and here on the start tab what I want my uh, unit to do once it's created is to choose a bridge, right? So if I want to choose a random bridge between two bridges, I will have to use random functions and to use random functions on Pixelpad we have to say import random at the top of the code so we can import all the random functions so we can get random numbers right and now that we have a random function i will have here a variable so i can store a number so what is a variable so let's say i have here three places of my code different places where i need to use a number for my for my player speed so let's say here I used three and here I used three and here I used three. It's my player speed, right? So that should be always the same number. And then at some point I decide that I want to change this number. I want to increase my speed. So I have to change this number for my new speed. So let's say four and then I'll change these three to four and I change these three to four as well. But what happens if I forget to change that three there and I change only this two? So my code will be inconsistent, right? And I can find some bugs, maybe, right? Depending on how my game works. But you can see that my code, it's inconsistent. It's not how it should be. So to prevent that kind of stuff from happening, we use a variable. So think in a variable like a box and we can store anything inside this box and, but we need to give a label to this box, a name to this box. So in this case, I'm going to create a box called speed to store my player's speed, right? And then inside this box, I will put the number three. So in these three places of the code, instead of, use, instead of using the number three, I can use the name of the box. So I can use speed here. I can use speed here as well. And I can also use speed there. So whenever I want to change my speed, I can just change whatever number I have inside this box here. So I can say that instead of having the number three now, I decided that I have, uh, that I want my speed to be five. So I just go there on that box and I change that speed to five. So now you can see that I don't have to change on three places anymore. I can only change in one place and everywhere else where it says speed is gonna look inside the box named speed and check what is the number inside there, right? So that's very useful for us. So let's start using a variable here for us to store a random bridge, to store which bridge we are going to walk towards, right? So to create a variable is pretty simple and we've done it before. If you see here in the game class, we have a variable to store a castle. So the enemy base is the name of the box or the name of the variable. And the castle is what it, it is storing, right? So the enemy base stores a castle, the bottom bridge stores a bridge, the top bridge also stores a bridge, uh, the ghost card stores a card, right? So we know that we can say just the name of the variable in and, and equals and then say what it's storing, right? So here on the unit, what I wanted to do is I wanted to choose a random number between zero and one 
but I don't want this number to be a float number. So I don't want it to be 0 0.5 or 0 0.95, right? I want it to be either 0 or 1. So to do that, let's first create our variable here. I will say bridge number. This is my variable's name. And this will be equals to... So now I want to use a random function. That's why we are using this import random here at the top to give me a random number between zero and one, right? So I can say here, random dot uniform brackets starting from zero and it goes until two. So I could say here zero and one, but what it would happen is because it never goes until one, it would go until 0 0.999999, but it won't get to one. So here I do, from zero to two. So it can go from zero until 1.99999. So I also don't wanna get float numbers and I want to round all the numbers that I get. So for example, if I get 0 0.59, these would be rounded to zero or 0 0.9999, these would be rounded to zero and 1.20 would be rounded to one and 1.9999 would also be rounded to one, right? So to do this, I just want to break these float numbers, right? I don't want the random, the random function to give me a float number. I want it to give me only integer numbers. So to do that, I can, can just include here an int before this random.uniform, and then I can surround the random.uniform with brackets like this. So I'm saying, give me a random number. This will give this will give me a float number, right? Between zero and two, and then round this number to be an integer number and store it inside bridge number. So just to test now to see if it's working, I'm gonna say here, print bridge number. So this print here is gonna print for me, is gonna write for me uh, something inside the console window here. And I'm going to write inside the console window, whatever I have stored inside bridge number. So you can see here that when I press play, I click on my card, it printed zero for me because when this, uh, this unit was created, it got a random number between zero and two and transformed this number into an integer number. So it is, it will be either zero or one. And then I printed this number. So this one got zero. Let's keep clicking here. This one also got zero. 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So see, this is totally random, right? And they are choosing, uh, they're choosing one of the two bridges. So the ones that has chosen zero, they are going to walk towards the top bridge and the ones that have chosen one, they are gonna walk towards the bottom bridge, right? So press save on your game. That's it for today's video. And we're gonna keep going on the next video. So I'll see you, bye.